Over the course of the past 300,000 years, humans have constantly changed and evolved to ensure the progression and survival of our species. But there have been three periods in our history where technological advancements fundamentally changed the way we live and work in society. The first industrial revolution took place between 1760 and 1840, with the use of new materials like iron and steel, and the use of new energy sources like the steam engine and electricity, we were able to create machines and modes of transportation that changed manufacturing forever. The second industrial revolution, also known as the Age of Science and Mass Production, took place between 1870 to 1914, and introduced things like the car, the telephone, and railroad networks that led to massive urbanization. The third and most recent industrial revolution spawned from the rise of digital technology, the computer, the internet, smartphones, etc. And right now, it's happening again for the fourth time. But this time, it's all about data and automation that are blurring the lines between the physical and digital world where all of our devices are smarter, faster, deeply integrated into every aspect of our lives, and seemingly interconnected through one giant artificially intelligent brain. And these are the technologies shaping the fourth industrial revolution. When we look at industrial revolutions in the past, we tend to focus solely on the technological changes that happened during that time, when in reality, the themes of those advancements can also be reflected in the cultural shifts society experienced during them. Which is why I want to kick this off with a major theme I've noticed across my research for this video, interconnectedness, where technologies that have existed completely separate from each other since their inception are now working together to complete a common goal. And maybe to you it might seem like a pipe dream, but I hope this theme can carry over into our society as well. Because hey, if my coffee machine, bedroom blinds, and alarm clock can work together, why can't we? <laughs> this interconnectedness between devices stems from two of the most influential technologies of this revolution, artificial intelligence and the internet of things. Artificial intelligence is the ability of a computer to perform human-like tasks and replicate human thinking and behavior. It refers to intelligence systems that can recognize objects, solve problems, and perform other actions that a human could, and it does so by focusing on the following five areas. Learning, reasoning, problem solving, language, and perception. The Internet of Things is, is just a fancy word for all of your smart devices, where everything is connected to the digital world. Your smart TV, smart car, smart speaker, smartphone, smart doorbell, you know, you, you get the gist. But soon enough, that's going to be applicable to everything. Your clothes, your pillows, your floors, your pipes, etc. And they're all going to share the same artificially intelligent brain. A brain that knows your sleeping data, and the best time to wake you up. And when it does wake you up, your alarm clock will start, your smart blinds will open up, your lights will turn on, your coffee machine will start brewing, and your thermostat will be adjusted to a specific temperature based on your body temperature at that moment. If there's a problem with your plumbing system, your pipes are gonna know it before you do, just like how you could feel an ache or pain in your own body. Your house will call and arrange the plumber for you, unlock the door for them if you aren't home, and even monitor them while they're there through your smart security system. This can seem a little overwhelming or scary depending on how you look at it, but like Tom Ward said, in his IoT TED Talk, if this technology is created and regulated ethically, it'll be a lot less big brother and a lot more big mother, hopefully, <laughs> where the technology is making your life significantly easier and looking out for you. But now that we've brought our devices to a more digital plane, we're going to have to meet them there too. And this is where augmented reality and virtual reality come into play. Augmented reality is a visual or audio overlay displayed onto the physical world that uses digital information and graphics to augment the user's real world view. This will be achieved first through AR glasses that almost every single major tech company is working on from Apple, Google, Meta, Bose, Microsoft, etc. And it's going to eventually lead to the replacement and end of the smartphone. Augmented reality is basically going to give us superpowers, <laughs> or at least it's going to make us feel like we have superpowers. It's going to give us the power of x-ray vision, which is going to be a massive advancement in the medical and surgical field. X-ray AR glasses have already been tested at John Hopkins, Thomas Jefferson, and Washington University hospitals, and led to a 98% accuracy in a delicate spine procedure with a range of 2 millimeters. While you're walking down the street in a foreign country, your Google map directions will be overlaid onto the ground in front of you. It's going to give you the power of recall, where you're never going to forget someone's name because when you look at them, their name, the last time you spoke, and what you spoke about will all be accessible to you. It's also going to give you gaze control, where you can control all of the technologies in your house with the wave of a hand or sweat of a finger. And if you're ever lying in a field or walking down the street, you can use overlays to add a music visualizer to the world around you to immerse you in the song that you're listening to. Augmented reality is a digital overlay on the physical world around you, where virtual reality is a 360 degree immersion experience into a computer generated world that is going to transform education, entertainment, medicine, and a lot more. For education, think of the magic school bus and, and <laughs> make it real. Students will be able to be transported to and learn about space, other planets, 
and periods of time that happened thousands of years ago. Artists will be able to hold virtual concerts with millions of people in attendance all at once. Doctors will be able to practice risky surgeries on photorealistic copies of their patients. Rescue teams will be able to simulate recovery missions. The list goes on and on. Virtual reality will basically open up the door to create any form of experience we could ever dream of. And whether you like it or not, it's going to eventually get so realistic that people are going to choose to live the majority of their lives and work in some of the digital worlds. But for those of us who choose to live in the physical world, 3D printing and robotics is going to open up the door for some more insane possibilities. 3D printing has been around since the 1980s, but the technology has really leveled up in recent years. So much so that the Wake Forest Institute for Regenerative Medicine is currently using human cells to 3D print functioning viable body parts. They are currently printing everything from human skin to heart valves to blood vessels so that in the future, when body parts are damaged or not functioning properly, they can simply be replaced. 3D printing is also being used to create working robots and relative robots who can reproduce and print themselves. So, you could set an army of them into space to start working on a massive spacecraft you physically wouldn't be able to launch off of Earth, or you can send them to planets like Mars where they could build an entire compound before the first humans ever arrive. And when it comes to robots, there are going to be a lot of them, from self-driving cars to humanoid service robots like the one from Tesla or Digit, construction workers like HRP5P, aquatic transformers like Aquanaut who are designed for deep sea maintenance, stuntronic robots for entertainment shows and movie stunt doubles like this one from Disney, and robots like Handle for fast warehouse maintenance. Like all of the industrial revolutions before it, the fourth is going to fundamentally change the world as we know it. In a time where trust in institutions has never really been lower, and the general perception of where the world is headed is pretty pessimistic, it is important to understand that positive change is possible, and advancements in technology don't have to be looked at through this black mirror type of lens. If we can eradicate illnesses, extend the human lifespan, create clean and sustainable energy systems, become an interplanetary species, and have an unbiased intelligence system that can solve problems we haven't been able to answer in thousands of years, it could actually be a really good thing. The thing that gives our species another 300,000 years to evolve and explore. And yes, there are definitely some players who don't have the world's best interests at heart. And yes, some of these people might be playing a significant role right now, but there are tons of good people, excited people, who are working forward on bringing a better future for all of us. And if you want to ensure that the good guys win, I'd encourage you to learn about what's coming and the ideas that are being put out there. Because the more support an idea has, whether that's Web3, or blockchain, or regulations, or rules of governance, the more realistic it is that that idea becomes a reality. Because you know, what you focus on does become a reality, so let's focus on a good one, maybe. <laughs> That is all for this video, but if you made it all the way to the end, I would really appreciate if you subscribed or clicked the like. It makes a huge impact on YouTube organically pushing me out more so that I can keep making these videos. I also really want to hear from you guys, any technologies or ideas that you're excited about, or any other topics you'd like me to make a video on. And either way, <laughs> thank you for staying through this video.